Okay. Bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Welcome back. Welcome back. We all have knives. I have a stapler. <laughs> This is what they meant when they said East meets West. <laughs> None of these are beam, y'all. Get your shit oh, together. You wanna, you wanna fucking go? I, don't know I stand oh, no. corrected. <laughs> you wanna fucking go? <laughs> oh, uh, fuck off, Cass. <laughs> Just... I have a turn next right on my desk, so that was an easy reach. Okay. <laughs> we, we get it. We all have knives within reach. <laughs> yeah. Um. Where was I? I, I swear a, I had a plan oh, like for after the break. <laughs> no uh, plan survives first contact with the player. Yeah. Knife party. Knife party. Um, knife party. Knife party. Okay. I, 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 I recall now we were going to do some of the stuff that we, uh, that we asked uh, before Cass joined the question of Cass, but before yeah. I wanted to get into that, we we got uh, epilogues for everyone. And I was wondering, Cass, if you had any thoughts about what an epilogue for Demon might be. Oh, God. <coughs> so... I, I don't know if you watched I the finale or at all. No, I was. I watched like the first half of it. I was trying to catch up before before this, but that's fine. Um, yeah, I sadly do not. Uh, he he did not come up. So that's yeah. I, I talked to Sasha and then said that was the case. So I was just like, okay, well, good. I don't need to worry about. <laughs> he he lived happily ever after. Is what happened. I'm sure. Well, he did have the, that extremely good uh, thread playing um what is it alone in the ancient city yeah yeah so yeah check out my uh my twitter page acast darkly and um go awesome. read go read that where yeah. i play talking about this amazing game alone in a ancient city uh, no uh, you get the game at droidhub.itch.io <laughs> <laughs> doing my plug <laughs> <laughs> Friendship is remembering everyone's plugs. Yeah. <laughs> so this is a question for you. Have you also not managed to do any game design stuff yet? I have also not managed to design. Okay, good. I'm not alone. I'm not yeah. alone. <laughs> to be fair, I designed one game, and I've I've got another one in the works. You're most you're you're not alone. Because it turns <laughs> out that like game design is not easy, <laughs> and so. <laughs> It requires effort, and I'm I'm not about that life. <laughs> <laughs> Lazy bitches unite eventually. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, that answers that question, Demon. Just, well, actually, no. Could you please elaborate on what this happily ever after might be? Uh, assuming that wasn't a facetious comment. It was. It was a very facetious comment. <laughs> um, so I mean, I don't know. I think uh, at this point, uh, demon is kind of embedded in the hyenas, and I think um, you know he would continue to fight with them. I think. Um, I mean, he has some principles. He certainly tries to avoid some civilian casualties, but. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I don't, he doesn't really sit well with authority, so I think he would kind of stay with them for a while and do his thing, and if, I imagine it ending poorly and bloodily at some point, but, um, I mean, I don't know, or maybe he, maybe he figures his shit out in the perfect world. <laughs> uh, I don't know, because, like, the, the thing with Demon is I think, like, I don't think we, when you were asking me questions before, like, the first, or the, the final two episodes, um, I had, you know, I wasn't sure if he was going to, like, show up on screen as an NPC or something, or if I would have, if I had had the chance to play him on screen. Um, my thoughts were that, um, like, as, as kind of a 
thought process for demon he would or I, I think i did mention this to you is like he he was not going to like he didn't necessarily want the senate to have to come to harm but he didn't want them to succeed on behalf of the myriad if they had sent them there with something because he was not fond of them and that's why he had left uh the myriad um and so like but if if it came down to it he probably would have put himself in harm's way especially for uh keiko or for dredge and possibly depending on the situation for tower um yes, did they bully you too you know, <laughs> um no, I, maybe. I don't know. I don't think Hera, I don't think, I think Hera was well past the point of believing. Um, and then if it had come down to uh, Scarecrow, I mean, yeah, she's expendable. <laughs> it was, it was not, not a friend of mine. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I don't know. Like, It's kind of a shame they never got to meet. I would have loved yeah, to I, I was. I, I did have like a few ideas in my head that I was like, "Oh, it'd be kind of cool to meet Scarecrow," <laughs> or just like, um, but yeah, that was it was kind of that. like epilogue wise. Yeah, I don't know. I think to be honest, I think where we left off when I when I left the show was probably a good a, a good spot. Like I think that kind of filled. Harrow's relevant character arc in a way. Yeah. Yeah, cool. I just was uh I had a feeling that would be your answer that it was just he he was sticking with the hyenas, but I wanted to see if there was any further thoughts you had on the matter or if you're like, yeah, you know what? He probably just fucking dies in that that fight at the tower. <laughs> if, yes. if you wanted to I kill, mean, you know. kill him ignominiously or gloriously. <laughs> So. Yeah, because because I think like you know in a a bigger grander sense it's like oh you know we fight against the breath of the faith and like deal with all this but it's like I you know I don't think beam saber is really that kind of game in the end right it's like I mean you you I mean I guess it could be in some ways but it's just like you are your characters are like pawns and you are trying to do the best you can against these overwhelming odds but everything is like a lot bigger than you are like both some sometimes physically <laughs> speaking and but like much more metaphorically and it's just there's these en- like engines of war that keep turning and you're just caught up in it and what can you do i mean like i think maybe on some level hero wanted to be a good person but violence always kept coming back you know yeah and how do you live with that? You know what? How, and so I think me playing Harrow is probably my best guess at that for <laughs> for how he managed that. So, wow! Oh, thank you for those insights. Um, and then the other question I wanted to ask that you missed earlier was what were your expectations um, for as both a player and your idea, like your expectation for what Demon was going to be coming into the campaign? So, um, I guess, I I guess I didn't come in with like a whole bunch of expectations. Like we had played previously, like just off the air. you know, I was excited about that. So uh, I don't think I had met none of you otherwise uh, before then. So um, you know, I was kind of going in blind, and uh, but I, I figured it would be. I figured it'd be a good time. I figured we were going. And I mean, I guess I closest I kept to my own application email. I was like, yeah, probably about ten to twelve sessions, and um, that's ultimately what I kind of ended up <laughs> doing. Um, but I. You know, I did expect to see, uh, you know, some cool mech fighting and like a bunch of, you know, essentially broken people trying to make their way in the war zone or or getting ground down by that. And, you know, mission accomplished, I suppose. <laughs> uh, as for Harrow himself, uh, I I like playing like 
priest-like characters, I suppose, in that sense. But, like, sometimes a spiritual advisor, the hero didn't quite get there. But, like, I like playing characters who have pasts that they're not thrilled about. I think that if I just trace an arc through a lot of my characters in general, guilt tends to be, like, a defining characteristic of of them. Um, and like always the idea that they should have done better and that in some ways they attempt to do better and in happier campaigns sometimes they succeed at that and then you know make amends and uh, sometimes they don't you know sometimes they they end poorly or sometimes like they just kind of continue on and i i figured i would play harrow you know as as kind of like this fatherly figure especially once like the rest of the squad came around and i think there's good aspects to that but i think also that like negatively you get some you know like overbearing paternalism and and things like that and uh there were definitely like a few good moments that stood out for me um like there were there were several moments with uh, with Keiko, and then with Dredge, there was visiting um, core doctor friend on the station, um, and then there was uh, the chicken nugget scene, <laughs> the the iconic chicken nugget scene in the town, <laughs> um, and uh, so those were good moments, and I I do feel that like some of the bad moments were. Uh, like everything with Senior Ken Arrow Slide, just I, like I think, I, I think I as a player was determined to have Harrow hate him from the minute he appeared, <laughs> um, just because he was like such a big authoritative figure in the church, and Harrow was like this this priest who had got sucked into the war, and he had done some bad things. We never really got into it, but uh, Takuma and I had discussed in private. Um, like maybe Arrow had wiped out like uh, Keiko's village, and you know that was that. Well, I mean, and it did sort of come up. I don't think it really like came out per se, but that was the thing that uh, what's their name? Castle Kim. Yeah, Castle Kim was dangling over in the limousine that whole conversation, and that, that I think that was like a good uh, a good spur for that because I think like. Like given the choice between perhaps confronting that and doing the right thing or running away, like eh, Karen <laughs> left the limousine. You know, I was like, "What do you do? What do you do?" Um, of course, I had to leave too, so there was that. But was, um, I do felt, I do feel that you know things went okay because that's why it went well because of some of the like side conversations that Takuma and I had had. And, uh, yeah. Right. I hope that answers questions. I yeah, start, no. Like, it, really? <laughs> it absolutely does. Um, does anyone have any thoughts for the moment, or should I move on to audience questions? I think audience questions would be fun. Yeah, I just want to make sure we hit those, because, you know, there's a good chance we'll springboard off of them into more conversation. Sure. Yeah. Uh... So, we will start with the uh, question we received from Hadrian, who is in the chat, or Hi, was, I don't know if he still is. Um, so, Hadrian says, Howdy, this campaign has been a blast to watch. First question, Austin, has the Cenotaph campaign directly contributed to rule revisions over the course of development? Yes. Uh, as, as I mentioned earlier, like, the way Quirk's work in part came out of the Magpie's existence. Um, another thing that is very recent that we never, I don't, I think it's so recent that we didn't take advantage of it, was that now in Beam Saber, downtime is three downtime actions. Instead what? of two. Yeah. Um, which came about because, like, 
when initially making Beam Saber, I did not take into account the fact that, like, I wanted two things, right? I wanted the war to grind you down, and I also wanted you to have the ability to pursue, like, other non-traditional unexpected options to try and push back against that whether that's schmoozing to improve your trust with factions collecting to get more supplies or doing long-term projects to whatever end and you know i with normal blades you don't have a vehicle that also needs to be repaired and you know maintained and upgraded so i did not take that into account initially so in a fairly recent addition to the game like i think it was version 0.41 or 40 it definitely came after the paid version of beam saber went out was you know downtime action there are now three downtime actions during downtime so that that's gonna need some play testing uh, I don't know, like, I, 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 yeah. I'm, just, like, I'm just like, that would really fundamentally change how a lot of, like, long-term logistics would have worked out over the campaigns. So I'm just like, my mind's kind of blown right now. Yeah, if you had 50% more downtime activity before you had to start dipping into cash. I might have paid back that trucker. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing like, is, um, yeah. that we played a lot of this campaign having two cash as a pilot like paycheck every mission and the thing is this is we lost that we lost one so it went down to one right and then you would use that cash to for like an extra downtime activity that's one of its uses so this is i think kind of balancing back towards that direction but uh encouraging players mechanically to explore the other downtime op options that in my experience, players don't get to do very often because they're doing all this maintenance. Yeah. Um, it, I, I think there's, like, a bounce to be struck either way um, because one thing I noticed is, like, um, in, certain way, in certain regards, we were kind of risk-averse. Um, I, I saw it as, like, either you want to damage the machine or the meat, never both, because that would eat up more actions. Um, but I also saw, like, we talked about long-term projects a lot, but I basically feel like we never did them. Like, I tried one once because I had a spare action, and then I never touched it again, especially because I got a one roll on it, so it's like, okay, whatever. You know? I, th I think, um, especially early in the campaign, there were there were less, there was less happening, um, and so there was more space to be, like, like, that's the reason that the, that, um, that, that Dredge's, uh, um, clinic yeah cl ai clinic um got set up to begin with uh was because i like had the, the time and resources to to commit to it um i think if if uh if there had been a third downtime action um or activity we probably would have seen that more on screen probably also would have gotten dredge would have gotten more therapy because that was my second long-term project um i i really charmed with the way that that turned out in in the way that fucking it reflects in real life which is that shit gets in the way <laughs> um and sometimes you just stop going um because you're accumulating other traumas you know it's just how life goes um but i i think uh if 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 there had been a, a third downtown activity i can definitely see that that leading to like getting more quirks and like actually like investing in in um in the machine rather than just keep upkeeping it yeah yeah i think i think your point about investment is definitely what i hope that the extra downtime activity will do that you know there will be less maintenance or not less but maintenance will be a lower percentage of your actions giving yeah. you the chance to invest in everything else yeah, I'm excited to see what it'll do. 
there's, there's definitely something to be said about that um, not being able to do everything that you want to, being part of the genre, but um, but as a quality of life thing, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see how, how it goes. Yeah. And I, I think that's part of why I just react, I think, quite strongly to that is just this idea of, oh, hey, like, this is pretty radically different to how we did things. And I really like the kind of tension and balance we managed to strike with this campaign. So, like, I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with it. It's just, like, the it, it would have radically changed things. And, like, I'm really happy with how this turned out. Kids these days getting soft with their three downtime actions. <laughs> <laughs> Back in my day, we downtimed uphill both ways <laughs> to our forward operating base oh, in the winter. Just a question about that, actually. Does that... Do you still only get one downtime action when you're at war, or do you get two? You get two. I did. Okay. I did keep that in mind. Yeah, war reduces it by one, and if you're if or vendetta reduces it by one, and if you're in vendetta with multiple squads, it doesn't stack. Oh, okay. Yeah, just out of curiosity. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when did the when did the one cash change happen? Ah, uh, f- I I do not recall that i could look it up if you really want to know because i got the the rules open which of course has the all the change logs in them Mm -hmm. yeah i was just wondering because of like how i mean almost everyone ended up money wise (laughs) (laughs) yeah excuse you i i stole money off of uh scarecrow's corpse i'm set Scarecrow was never going to retire. Because, like, in my experience, I've... Oh, sorry. No, I was done. Um, Because, like, Tom, with the, um... With the ability that gives you, like, two stash after every mission or whatever, that's, like, been the only way I've seen people fill up, like, multiple bars in the retirement thing, so... June 6th, 2018, with version 0.25. Really? Uh, that wait, unless... Hold on. Right. Yeah, it's actually, right. sorry. I. Yeah, no. No, August 11th, version 0.27. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Um... So that's when that happened. Uh, as for other rules that the the stream contributed to, I think just doing a live show has made me more conscious about ways to speed up play and make things snappier. Like having that example list. I don't think that that precedes the cenotaph. But things like that are an example of uh, things in the rules to make things go quicker so that there's less of any person hemming and hawing about it. Also, when I put in the technician simulation ability, um, and I was asking for feedback about its initial version, uh, Takuma very helpfully pointed out that in its original state, the technician could pick consequences for anyone in the squad. Like, the consequences still happened at the uh, uh, position that they happened. So, like, you know, if you get a risky consequence, you can't be like, you only get one level one harm. Um, but Takuma pointed out that this would really slow things down if one player was deciding whether or not they wanted to decide everyone's consequences for every role or if the GM should come up with that. And I mean, it's already kind of in the rules that like if someone thinks of a consequence that they think would be good, then, you know, the GM's free to use that. But yeah doing doing a live show 
has definitely made me more conscious about how to make things snappier. Anyone else have thoughts about how they think the uh, rules might have changed because of the cenotaph? Um, resetting uh, relationship box. Yeah. Was, yeah. There we go. Yeah, that's another fairly recent one. Is that relationships now reset to one instead of to zero, and. Uh, that was a part a big part of that change was pointing out that impropriety resets it to zero and that's a punishment so yeah yeah a punishment which i abused <laughs> <laughs> it was such a good scene <laughs> oh. into play games game good <laughs> i guess sort of tangentially is that there was a change to rivals that happened towards the end of the cenotaph, which we never used because it, it was a rival. Uh, <laughs> partially, um, which we which we never used because it was so late in the game. Like I think y'all were in the Twinland Red HQ when that change came through, so I didn't want to be like, okay, the rules for Harlan Smythe have changed. Um, I handily bested my rival, so I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> oh. See, you may have bested your rival, but I emotionally destroyed mine <laughs> from the grave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think Demon was the one who got emotionally destroyed in that confrontation. <laughs> um, this actually leads to a question from me, though. And, uh, is, I guess kind of goes to everyone really, but like, um, particularly I think with rivals, like how much like detail did people provide and how much like came out of like, cause like in my particular case, I basically didn't give Austin fucking anything with Harlan. I just gave him a fucking name and like it, I, it kind of came out emergently between us um, where I started throwing in the Shakespeare stuff and assuming things. And I think that worked out really well for me, but I'm curious like how much preconception everyone else went into um, because I feel like those would be private conversations between y'all and Austin if that was what was going on. I literally just gave Austin a name and a squad, and that was <laughs> it. I think... Like, I didn't even have... Like, I, I had it internally, but I don't think... And I don't think we had any real conversations about it until uh, Alice came up in this last mission. Like, I think. Like, that was really the first time where it really came up. <laughs> Because the first time I brought her on screen, you two never even knew that the other one was there. No. <laughs> but you got an excuse to use your cool Mac, so. <laughs> yeah. I think also that was a case of like, yeah, Jess, um, don't kill Ray's rival. <laughs> I think that was also what was going on at the time. Yeah. No, that's fair. I don't know. I think the only guidance, uh, looking back through my, my DMs, um, that I gave for Virgil was just don't make him a bad guy. Like, you know, he's not he's not the bad person in this situation. Virgil Bay did nothing wrong. Yeah. <laughs> nothing wrong. Don't make him the bad guy. That's my job. Yeah. Two sir is an old OC. I had two sir from high school. Um, <laughs> Hell yes! <laughs> I'm away for just a moment. I'll be sure right thing. Back. I'm not okay. the only one who put their OC in the <laughs> campaign. I'm I'm now seeing you know like, um, fucking beam saber after hours. You guys just got two sir and lady Ella just hanging out at a bar, swapping oh. more stories. Please. <laughs> <laughs> That's a ship I didn't know I needed. Hey, <laughs> God, uh, I wasn't even. I mean, you know. I was talking about hanging out, but that's <laughs> where know. we're going. That's where you we're know. going. My thing's going to die. Is dead. I I was no. half expect like if the Twinler and Red Mission had gone differently, I was expecting Tuser to be there at the tower with the Hell brought forth fighting Starfall, oh, but it didn't work out that way. And I that's fine because we got we got uh, to bring in other rivals yeah i honestly the fucking season finale to the, for the for the first season um was like so much 
good a attention between Dredge and Tuser that I didn't want to like bring that back because it, that that had already gotten so much screen time. Um, but but yeah, I I have I have details that I, I said like um, uh, Tuser and was the only other people other person that Dredge remembered or knew from from Diamond Station, and I had I had a bunch of like head cannons that I didn't want to share because I knew absolutely for certain that F that Austin would come up with something more interesting and better. Um, like, uh, like the head cannon that I had was that like they were they were at the same bar when they got news of the Diomedes Station, um, and so there was like bonding there. Um, and then just like I, I had this this picture of their like various careers like intersecting at these points um, that like uh, like. The, the, the main conflict between Tuser and Dredge was that Tuser um, kept Dredge from saving the uh, core friend um, in uh, in a, in like this war zone uh, until until the place was just like flacked uh, down to the down to the foundations um, and didn't come up didn't need to <laughs> um, but yeah like I Tuser was such a fun rival and I'm like so pleased with uh how how you Austin played her and I also was so pleased to get to play her uh with uh with with Taco Buzz game and yeah big big love for that uh that that nightmare human <laughs> that yeah. extremely good mech there also <laughs> so good I I I don't remember what was Tuser's Avi in the Ivy. I should know this. Because I don't. Uh, it's like a bike that turns into an artillery cannon. Oh yeah. Yeah. I wish I could remember the name. Oh, it was it was the vial. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hearing Mega Man themes in my head and I hate it. Thank you. Um. It was... <laughs> it's so different from the Hellbrod Four. <laughs> God, what was yeah. the Hellbroth? I don't. We didn't get to read the spec. What was the spec like? The Hellbroth Fourth was only in uh, Saint Gertrude's funeral. That was the only scene it was in, because mm. y'all never got into a fight with it. It was like, uh, it was like a walking artillery piece. It was basically like an, it was, like a quadru. It was like a quadrupedal, uh, version of the Karasu. Honestly, like it was. A bit more, uh, it, it was bigger and heavier, and was m like more armored theoretically. But it was like the cross a walking cannon with drones, because you described you described her as a sniper. So I was like, I think for the rivals, I'm just gonna make most of them be essentially equivalent to uh, one of the player playbooks. Oh yeah. So. I mean, that's pretty dope. Also, uh, outside of outside of Beam Saber, Tuser uses a bow, and I was like, I probably should pick something else for Beam Saber because that doesn't quite fit. <laughs> but yeah, still, still, cool middle arm and stuff. So nice. Takuma, any thoughts on uh, ear rival or plural? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I mean, Jason was like. I, mm, that was satisfying to kill Jason in the end because he was a bad man. Um, and that's the thing, because, like, I, I think originally Jason was an easy rival of sorts because he was just a bad dude. He was just a shitty dude who, like, will attack, like, a little village on the edge of a territory or something um, for to raid them for supplies, and it's just, like... A shitty human being that vapes, fucking, weed, weed, <laughs> vape. fuck, oh. weed scented, no weed THC. Scented. No, okay, no that was my question. God, why would you and do like, that? Of course, Pitchfork's gonna fight him. Of course, um, but I'm actually really glad that Hannah evolved into this like conflict between her and Layla and, and Keiko kind of stuck in the middle and 
getting knifed and whatever and that was really good so I'm, I'm glad i got both sort of because it was definitely satisfying to like have jason come up again and this time be like no this is it for you buddy <laughs> also again i feel so bad about hannah <laughs> That entire, like, rescue op was such a clusterfuck, and I it honestly love so it. Good. It was, it was so really good. good and fraught and just, ah, uh, so tasty. So, so tasty. That, that, I think that was, like, the first real big moment of, like, oh, shit, is is this character bleed, like, Takuma, are we cool? <laughs> it, was, it was such a good mission. God. Yeah, that, that whole thing with Hannah is part of the reason for the changes to the allies and rivals rules is because while like the whole Hannah arc played well narratively I kind of feel like you that you and her were done dirty a little bit mechanically <laughs> since like that whole time Jason Baza was still technically your rival yeah and it would like uh, that's another change that came out of the campaign slightly more indirectly was you know wanting to make these changes to rivals and then i was doing some a game design stream and um uh <laughs> austin walker was in chat uh helping me work through how the new rivals should work mm-hmm because he, he misunderstood how rivals worked. Initially, he thought that you had beliefs with rivals in the same way you do with your fellow pilots. And that was not the case. But now it is. It's just works slightly differently. Because obviously, you're not cutting loose with your rivals. I mean, some rivals maybe you, you cut loose with. But now it's dependent upon, like, you get a belief with them. Like, you start off with what You only ever have one belief with them. And then, no matter how many ticks you have... And then you add ticks whenever you, like, if you add a tick to their clock during a mission, or, or, and, and or if they deal harm to you during a mission. <laughs> <laughs> so you can get two That's ticks cool. with your rival permission. And then, of course, if it fills, you get to ask a question and That's mark really XP. So. That's good. Yeah. It's like, yeah, you can, you, can, you can cut loose with your rival as long as you're willing to tolerate those weed vapes. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off, Jason. Speaking of vapes. Rest in <laughs> fucking pieces. Uh, he's such a dirtbag. Like, I had very little screen time. Well, not even direct screen, like, very little exposure to him, but, like, I hated him absolutely, and it was great. I know that guy. <laughs> I have classes with that guy. That guy's in my world issues class, and he charges his uh, jewel off the Chromebooks. <laughs> oh my god. Disgusting. <laughs> We're gonna come step on him with a giant robot. It's fine. <laughs> uh, like... <laughs> he, Jason Bezel was so fun to play because of how shitty he was, and like, I did not have to make, do anything even vaguely redeemable about him. <laughs> like, all the other rivals had to have like at least a touch of sympathy to them you know not yeah. jason no jason i could just you know put him in kevlar and then a tank top over the kevlar and then oh. two pistols and cowboy boots <laughs> and a duster he's every garbage like kid that sits at the back of your class and just covers the room in like cotton candy vape cloud but weed. Not technically smoking, bro. <laughs> Not uh, smoking. Not smoke. Yeah, and, yeah, and another thing that I wanted with him was like the idea that while Keiko hates him, he has no fucking clue who she is. <laughs> <laughs> Just because he like like what like it's it's M Bison in the Street Fighter movie, right? <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> you know, what? roll Julia without the charm or the talent or the likability. Bingo. Ugh. What a piece of shit. <laughs> God. Uh, so I think, I think uh, we should move on to the next question. Um, also from Hadrian. 
which is directed at y'all, players. At the end of a fairly long campaign like this, how do you each feel about your playbooks overall? And given the chance to make a new sheet for your character, would you still pick the same playbook? I'm, I'm also going to add an addendum to that, which is like, if you were to make a new character, what playbook might you want to explore? But uh, we'll, we'll cover Hadrian's question first. Like, how do you feel about your playbooks? I really like one. I had a lot of fun with it. I, I play a lot of um, very tanky characters in my other games. And it was really, really fun to, to like... Because I think in one of my other games, I am like a big, like a heavy... Uh, and in the other, I am a cleric, because Dungeons and Dragons. Um, and this was a huge shift for me from what I normally play, and it was really, really, really fun. And I, I had a really good time just sort of exploring different ways of playing. I don't know. Yeah. And would you, if you were gonna make tower again would you still do infiltrator or would you yeah absolutely i think i'd probably take uh more empath moves uh i i took um good hearted and i think i'd want to take maybe one more move from the empath hmm. yeah. and i don't know if if you were to make a new beam saber character what what playbook you might might you want to explore and why? I really want to play an ace. Uh, <laughs> I did so little with the mantis uh, <laughs> in this game, and I really want to build an Avi centric character uh, and just play with that. Stop getting out of your Avi. <laughs> I look. I like climbing on things. <laughs> I'm yeah. very slippy. Yeah. <laughs> they got yeah. that cli climbing gear, that fine camo. Yeah. Like Can I just say how much fun it was to steal Tower Shtick for one bit to get in the fucking Savannah Sovereign? <laughs> <laughs> so, so Jess, how do you feel about uh, the Scout playbook? Um, I like it for what it does. Um, for Scarecrow, actually, I think I would want to change. And I actually probably would also consider the ace for remaking her. Um, because that was part of the original consideration. And one of the things is I like her much more in the second half of my time here than I do in the first. Um, because she ended up taking more risk and getting more damage. And, like, she was, upon her introduction, I think one of the more combat-capable members of the of the squad. And she was much safer than other members of the squad. And uh, she, she, and just from the kind of fictional positioning of it, she was very risk avoidant. And so I think I'd like to, and also because of the way I built her, and I think also coming in later when we had access to more skill points, um, just kind of put her in this position where she was very safe very early. And she was very good both in and out of her mech. So I think I would rather like go with the A. Or maybe the soldier, but, you know, soldier was taken. Um, but, like, something a little bit more meat grindy, I think, would be, I think, more... It, I think it would get her there faster. I still like where she is and it play out the story, but that I think that's kind of where I would go if I wanted to kind of tell her story again. Um, as for another character I want to explore, I want to play a fucking empath. Um, because I had this great, I think, did I tell you about this, Austin? I think I might have. Yeah. Um, I had this great, like, perfect, bad 80, bad but kind of good 80s sci-fi, uh, concept for what you could do to make, like, a psionic character. And basically the concept was Bubble Boy. Um, the concept was that, um, oh, it turns out the reason we're not psychic is because we're, we have internal flora and fauna, we have internal fauna. So, you know, you've got all your gut bacteria and stuff. And so, like, you know, you get, I'm hungry. Mm, yes, I'm hungry. That's part of my brain. Because, like, you know, your gut flora can actually tell you, like, it can influence what you want to eat and stuff like that. It's really, like, fascinating stuff. So this idea that you'd have this person with no internal flora who, well, like, they basically use their mech as a clean room. I, which I thought was, like, this really cool idea. And, like, there's also, like, mechanical stuff I want to explore, um, networking stuff. But, like, 
I also just really like the concept. And I think that was, you talked, I think, a while back, Austin, about like what kind of archetypes aren't really represented in uh, Beam Saber. And I don't think this is necessarily like a mech touchstone, but you've got stuff like um, a lot of the psychic characters um, in certain things or the character who's part of the ship or part of the crew, like who's who's in some ways separated from the rest of humanity. Um, like, you know, you've got that girl from Outlaw Star who like goes in the ship drive and stuff. Like th those kind of characters who not necessarily are completely isolated from other characters, but who approach humanity from a different, I think, baseline. You know, like, you're, like Data, for example, these characters who don't quite come from the same place. And so that's something I would really like to explore. Yeah, I actually have plans um, for two playbooks that are meant to explore the relationship with humanity. The first is the Transformed, who doesn't have a vehicle, but becomes something that can fight on the scale of Avi's. Oh my fucking god, Austin, do not tempt me, because now I'm just going to play Turbo Team. <laughs> this is the thing I say in every group, is I will play Turbo Team. <laughs> I will find a way to make it work. Um, and then the other one is that, like, basically from the jump, people have been asking, like, so is there a way to play a proxy or to play a robot? So I, I've been thinking a long time about, like, making a playbook specifically about, uh, you know, playing a proxy. And I'm less interested in the robot one, but... It could also, like, I'd have to see if it, like, really, if I could think of abilities that I thought were notably interesting that weren't really covered by other playbooks, because that's really a big part of it. I think I have, like, a good baseline in that I'll probably go to Blades in the Dark and have a look at the Ghost and Hull uh, playbooks in that and see how those... Uh, if there's stuff I can pilfer from there. Yeah, that's actually something I appreciate about how playbooks work so far in uh, Beam Saber. And it's one of the things I really appreciate about Max is you can take the same fictional concept and play it through different playbooks to focus on different aspects of it. Like I said, Scarecrow as a character, as a storyline and narrative arc, fits as a scout, as a soldier, as a um, ace. All three of those could work for her. And so, like... When I look at this idea of doing the empath and doing this kind of character that's exploring humanity, it's like, yeah, I could fit that into this character concept, but also like these new playbooks are also welcome because the, that would give me a different way to, and a different avenue to look at things. Yeah. Uh, Sasha, talk more, Cass. Do either of you want to weigh, any of you want to weigh in on uh, your thoughts about your playbook? I took almost every uh, technician advance I could I, and I used all of them and had a really good time using all of them um, so I'm, I'm very pleased with the technician the only the, the two that I didn't take were, um, were simulation and researcher um, and I think if, if I had had three uh, downtime actions I probably would have like done something with the um, with the like dragon uh, like acid stuff um made that a thing um if, if if i if i had taken researcher um but for for the most part dredge wasn't really an, an inventy kind of character um so i think that worked out i think the 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 other play, playbooks i would have played co with um would have been bureaucrat or or, or hacker um either like i i, I think i think i i didn't take bureaucrat because um uh, because Harrow was already play already playing the officer, and so it was just like that felt kind of redundant. Um, and I'm really glad that I we had a doctor on the team. <laughs> that came in really handy, and it all it was also a, an extremely selfish choice because that meant that I was in a bunch of downtime scenes. <laughs> was that intentional? Maybe a little bit. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I like I like downtime scenes a whole bunch. Um, I also like downtime scenes. They're good. I listen. Bottle episodes are good. I like I like I like the missions, but I also I really like the bottle episodes. Um, 
I think the 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 other directions it, it uh, uh, Co could have gone um, would have been really leaning into um, core relationship with with AR and um, and and proxies and whatnot um, with with a hacker, um, and that would that actually have a have a note on my on my character sheet which is ask ask Scratch about AI versus proxies. That was just like a. This is probably like a, a conversation that that they had off screen, just like late into the night, frequently of like, well, what's the where 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 do you draw that line? Like, when do, when does a proxy become an AI? When when does an AI serve as a proxy? Like, what's the difference there? Um, on on like on on further thought, that probably wouldn't have played out as well on screen as it assuredly does in, in fan fiction, but. Um, <laughs> Well, speaking of fan fiction, that delineation is now in the rules. I don't recall if that was with version f- point four one or if it's with the upcoming point four two, but Ooh. but that explanation is in the rule book now about the oh, differences sure. between programs, proxies, apps, and AIs. So, Hell yeah! <laughs> it's something that is like obviously the the each of those categories has been in the rules since the start but and i always had like notes on what they were but i've only recently f- really fleshed it out so you can go oh. check that out if you want <laughs> and read my fan fiction on the topic <laughs> and if if you were to play a new character what playbook would you want to try and why the envoy i think um uh, someone who knows how to speak to people. Yeah, <laughs> someone who knows how to speak to people, and also someone who is good at violence. Um, those two things uh, would be would be fun to try. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, Takuma. Uh, I mean, soldier was fine. I think that was the the right call i think i wish i had taken good hearted instead of everybody hurts earlier i wish i'd switched the order on that because i didn't get to use good hearted as much later on as the like scars made it a little harder and there were harder choices to make mm. um, i would have gotten more use out of it and more like interesting situations in the beginning i think i also wish i had taken bodyguard at some point um, I don't know where that would have fit in, though. Probably earlier on as well. Maybe Mule would have been later. But, like, in general, the, the soldier gear was good. It made sense. Um, if I... If I was going to play a different playbook... I haven't played an ace, so maybe that. I also, oh, there was that one session I played with a hacker that was like an ex-Pixar, ex-space Pixar, middle-aged dude who's just like, I do really want to play a hacker that's like really AR, like confusion and like illusion based. Um, when, eventually. <laughs> sometime uh, the transform sounds really cool because I, I love Ultraman I grew up with Ultraman um, and there's also uh, uh, there's a lot there's a lot I should stop before I keep going because I can keep going <laughs> I'm, I'm glad there's many that you're interested in <laughs> also the proxy oh my god can I please play, play that now if I could just Big maybe. Mood. <laughs> you just want to play scratch. Oh, okay, yes. But also, <laughs> what about like clones? I. So my would that be proxy-ish. My thought would be that it would be like. It, I wouldn't do a like robot playbook. I would do the artificial, mm. which you know would be about being a physical creature that was created and the point being that they were created so I think 
clone could be covered by that, but you know, there's the... some other characters in the Johnny Ryden like series. They're these like child ace pilots who are like grown in labs and whatever. That they're really good. They're really good kids. I would maybe want to play one of those. Uma Lightning or Ingrid Zero. <laughs> Uh, oh, Gundam names. Oh, Gundam names. <laughs> uh, Cass, how do you feel? Uh, obviously, it's been a while, but how do you feel about uh, your time with the Officer playbook? Um, I loved it. It was um, it's exactly the kind of character I want to play. Um, I think when I was making Hero initially, when I had conceived him, I uh, was debating between that and the Envoy. And uh, I think I just went with Officer because there was more. Oh gosh, so what, what abilities did I have? I was trying to look, and that's why I crashed out of the stream. Um, <laughs> the, uh, but yeah, there were just like more social uh, ones overall. Um, I felt with the Officer, and also oh, it was the the one where I didn't have to spend my uh, stress to make commands in battle. So there was a bit of social stuff, and there was also more, like, squad-based um, things. And that's why I went with that playbook. And I, I did not regret it at all. And, uh, yeah, so I think it's pretty good. I don't know if the... I haven't taken a look in a little bit. I don't know how much the officer playbook may or may not have changed. I, I could not tell you offhand. Okay. Um, well, but that's good. No major changes, practically. <laughs> then, if you were to uh, play a different playbook for Hero, what would it be? Uh, probably the Envoy. It would just be like an easy. Uh, like I don't know that he would be too much different. Um, I might have played up the Joe Vangelian aspect part more, or he may have been from the Joe Vangelian Empire. Uh, were he an Envoy? Or maybe like a double agent or something like that. You'd have a hidden blade instead of a hidden gun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and if you were to like go for an entirely new character, what? Uh... Uh, so I already did this in a way, right? Um, uh, at Breakout Con, I played uh, the Scout, and I had the chance. Uh, I was it? I played um, Avalon or Victoria Stafford. And she had the coolest tank. <laughs> um, and uh, I was very much in love with that character. And I, I wish I had the opportunity to, uh, to play her some more. Also, it was a pretty good group. Shout out to, uh, to Lioness, <laughs> uh, if you're watching. Um, but yeah, no, that was, that was a good time. I think I, I, would, I would play the scout or I would play um, an infiltrator. would probably be my, my two choices on that front. Scout's fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So fun. Scout is very fun. Nice. Um, so that that's the extent of our audience questions. <laughs> <laughs> Does your character have a theme song? Anyway. Um, yes, I did, in fact, an entire soundtrack. Um, it's something a friend introduced me to a couple years ago that I do for a lot of characters I play. Um, but it's an acronym soundtrack, so you spell out their name and then you put a song title with starting with each letter. And for Scarecrow, um, one thing that it's really difficult to do sometimes is if you can make a narrative arc through that. And actually, I'll, I'll pull up the playlist now because I just I just want to list this out. Uh, um, don't don't play it, please. <laughs> I'm not I'm not gonna play it. I'm just gonna list the song names. Um, so if I go to my channel playlist. So for Scarecrow, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you, you got her whole like fall from like the Shade Spear thing to um, where things go. Um, so start with ACDC's Shoot to Thrill, um, Shine Down's Cut the Cord, um, A Feast for the Vein, which pisses me off because it's listed on the official like album as A Feast for the Vein, but then like on YouTube it's just Feast for the Vein. <laughs> it's like that kind of Faustian bargain thing. Um, Woodkid's Run Boy Run, Shine Down's Enemies, Eureka 7 OST, Cruel World, um, Rain from Cowboy Bebop, because the classic emo track, 
um, the Lumineers' Ophelia, and the final track, which I think is really her theme overall, is um, Pink Floyd's Wish You Were Here. Like, considering how she went out, it worked fucking perfectly. <laughs> Anyone else got uh, theme songs for their characters? I also put together a playlist for this one. <laughs> Whoa! This which is I, which buddies! I, yeah! Which I just finished um, uh, a couple of days ago because of the, you know, you don't know what the ending's gonna be until the ending happens. Um, and there's a bunch of They Might Be Giants on it, there's a bunch of um, of Nico Case on it, there's some St. Vincent. God, there's so much They Might Be Giants because I am the person that I am. Um, and um, well, thanks for putting your symbol in my head again. <laughs> uh, it ends with um, with the bells of hell go tingling ling uh, That's the last track, uh, which is just this awful fucking thing for this movie. Uh, um, and the the theme I think uh, I would attach to Dredge specifically is um, is either last wave by they might be giants or uh push back the hands by they might be giants uh the the chorus of last wave is uh we die alone we die afraid we live in terror we're naked and alone and the grave is the loneliest place <laughs> that's the chorus and you sing it as loud as you possibly can and that's dredge's theme <laughs> mm-hmm. I, dig it. I absolutely dig it any themes for uh tower pitchfork or demon I have a really hard time making character playlists. I've never been good at it. Same. Uh, so no. Yeah. Not off the top of my head. Uh, I kind of... I think the one thing I had uh, was, I think, pre, pre-campaign, pre um, like, while they were still with the uh, Cirque du Soldat, I think, um, Screwed by Janelle Monet. Uh, but that's the only thing I've really had in mind. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm sorry. Can I just throw? I, can I just throw one on the pile? Hmm? Focus, focus by focus. <laughs> Little bit. <laughs> I'm not actually familiar. I just like the name. I'm sorry. It's it, it's the. Have you seen Baby Driver? No, I haven't. Okay. It it's the it's the song called? with the. Kick ass guitar and the yodeling. It's, it's great. It's absolutely fantastic. I'll look it up. Anything? Also a good one is uh, uh, Cathedral by Crosby, Stills, and Nash. That's a good one for the cenotaph. Hmm. It's about it's about getting getting high in a in a church and then getting really mad about the, the church's historical atrocities. <laughs> <laughs> Appropriate. Um. I don't have a whole playlist, but uh, I always end up finding like tonally inappropriate songs for for my characters. Um, but in this case, it's Gordon Lightfoot's Don Quixote for uh, Arrow was probably like it's a it's a pretty good one. Like I don't know, I don't know. It just kind of always clicked for me. And hmm. I think I was talking about it on Twitter a couple months back. But I, I never end up coming up with these until after I've played the character. I always have a hard time doing something while a game is going on yeah it's it's mostly a process of like listening to your music and being like oh this is a dredge song oh hey god this reminds this makes you know me what up, you know what upset me i'm i'm kind of mad at little nass because for the o's lot for like the end of like uh scarecrow's arc old town road is great except for that one verse where it's like i got gucci in the back and my hat's matte black because like it's like, you know, take me down to that old town road, going to ride till I can't. Like, that's very fucking Scarecrow. And it's just like, <laughs> no, this is shit. No. It doesn't all have to fit. <laughs> you I know, but I'm particular about it. Okay. I don't know. I think my, my issue with doing this is that I'm the kind of person that listens to the same album on repeat uh, for, like, two yes. months at a time. So I have yes. a hard time, like... Uh, picking picking anything uh, from any diverse sources. Solidarity. <laughs> well, what you do is <laughs> is you uh you pick a band that's been making music since the seventies, mm-hmm. and then you just pick from their over over exclusively because, yeah. Yeah, I've got character playlists that are just 
John Darnell and the Mountain Goats. Um, like, fully. <laughs> Anything yeah. for Pitchfork? Um, I have two wildly different <laughs> options. Well, I think both are, both are, you know, work. Um, so Can't Kill Us by the glitch mob from Love, Death, and Immortality. And the other one is The One Who Stayed and The One Who Left by Regina Spector. Ooh. Ah. Damn. Yeah. Fuck. One, two, punch. Ah. Regina Spector almost made my list. If it wasn't Wish You Were Here, it would probably be in her cover of While My Guitar Gently Leaps for Kubo and the Two Strings. Yeah, I've got I've got oh, Ballad of a Politician by Regina Spector on this playlist. Ballad of she's a Politician. Good. She's, so good. she's so good. So good. God, she wrecks me. I just rely This is now a Regina Spector Appreciation Podcast. Hell yeah. Oh, there's also in the bedroom <laughs> after the war by Stars, I think. <laughs> Which is also actually a pitchfork song. That's an aftermath. That that that's actually the finale song for Pitchfork. I think that's the that's the last song in the playlist. <laughs> hey, there's three right now. I've done it. <laughs> Woo, there you go. Uh, I don't have a song or a playlist for the cenotaph. You have um, one for scratch. I do not. <sighs> Damn it. I think they probably listen to literally everything at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> good yeah um but there i did listen to something in particular like l literally every every tuesday on my way home from work i would listen to the zeta gundam ost so because i fucking love that that ost it is so good there's so much emotion and storytelling across that soundtrack so much like sorrowful strength in it um so yeah i listen to that a lot so yeah also basically every time i'm in the shower too uh <laughs> <laughs> um and then there, there are two songs that are the quote-unquote official Beam Saber songs, which is um, the the opening would be "Set It Off" by Audio Slave, um, and then the 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 ending theme would be "Victory" by Janelle Monae. So, good themes, good themes. Yeah. <sighs> you know. I, I just this this is more of just like a beam saber thing. This isn't for a specific character, but like, it, it's an a it's an A tier song sung by a C plus tier band, Death from Above, which is just cut together out of quotes from Starship Troopers. It's so good, but like the production on it just isn't up to snuff, and it it breaks my heart every time. <laughs> it's like you know, come on, you apes, do you wanna live forever? It's so good. It's so good. Ah! Yes, I do. I do want to live forever. Would you like to know more? <laughs> <laughs> Does uh, anyone have any final thoughts about the campaign as we approach uh, the end of the end? Ah! Of this show. Oh, oh no, it's here. All the Don't hit me with this finality! No! It needs to last forever. You're all. You all got epilogues. <laughs> no, it was, a, it was a fantastic time. I was happy to be a part of it. Thank you for having Absolutely. me. Thank you all for being lovely humans. It doesn't Thank all you. have to be gushing, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but they're actually yes. awesome. This is this is all. Yeah, good. For sure. This no, 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 no. Thanks, <laughs> no. for no, I like I had a genuinely lovely time and Yeah, I, I wouldn't change a goddamn thing. I'd probably change that first mission you were here for, Jess. <laughs> <laughs> that one didn't go as well as it could have. But <laughs> Honestly, I it's part of the experience. And honestly, I, I loved coming in during downtime. I feel like that was such a strong like 
settling introduction for the character. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, this was my last year of high school. Like this game took place over the end of grade 11 and like pretty much minus a week and a half all of my last year of high school uh and you know like it it as much as it's kind of weird because i'm baby um like <laughs> <I'll continue. laughs> uh it 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 was a little sort of strange coming in, but I think it really, it was really good. And y'all are wonderful, and I, I'm really glad that this is the thing I got to do, uh, as sort of like, to accompany me finishing this up. So you're gonna have like a beam saber mortar board, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I don't. Oh, be sure to include a link. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, graduation isn't until October, so I've got some time. <laughs> My school is weird. Yeah, I don't know. It was just, it was nice. Yeah, it's always weird because, like, when you're in the middle of it you always feel like, ah, I don't know what I'm doing. You're like, oh, the dice rolls, they're happening. What am I doing? Um, but, like, I don't know. It all comes together somehow. It was a good, it's a good system. It's a good, I think, um, development on Forged in the Dark. And it's interesting having to care about your vehicle as well as yourself. And I think that, like, I... I liked the way that the relationship mechanics worked, and I think that drove a lot of what we ended oh, up Oh, no, doing. it drove yeah. some fantastic drama. Yeah. yeah. I, I just want to say that this game was important to me. Like, this is my first game. Like, you know, Ray, you were talking about, this, you know, your last game in high school, really, but, like, this is my first game as a woman, and, like, that's been so fucking huge for me. Like, all this, like, you guys got to see me learn how to do this shit. And that was a great episode of the Cenotaph, where we just watched you do makeup for three hours. <laughs> yeah. Was... I'd watch that. <laughs> yeah, okay, and now we're introducing the Riza Hagden brand, the, the <laughs> foundations for the battlefield. God. I like Chief's this red. It looks like the blood <laughs> of my enemies. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Okay, you, you see this color of eyeshadow here? It also works, if you rub it down here, it works as anti-reflective grease paint, so you don't get the sun in your eyes. It's good for the sniping. I'm just imagining... <laughs> I'm just imagining a shade of lipstick that just goes on as camo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's very good. That's a mm -hmm. curse. <laughs> Our new oh my one. god. That's a curse. <laughs> You've brought a curse into the world. <laughs> I'm sure that's a thing. And see, this, this, is ex this is exactly what I'm all about, because, like, I come in here with this heartfelt fucking moment, and it turns into shit posting. <laughs> yes. That's how tabletop games be. Uh, Sasha or Takuma, any uh, thoughts, final thoughts on the campaign? Oh, just a lot of feelings, mostly. Um, so, this campaign got me drawing again um and writing again um like a, and and like being able to, sh to share like share drawings of, of dredge in in the in the group chat and then y'all being like you should post this on me you know actually fucking post this on me you coward and <laughs> um, that was we're, like we're good friends <laughs> yeah yeah um that's been really important to me and um and getting i I'm, I'm really glad this was streamed for a number of reasons one because it held us accountable to actually playing this through to the end um like like you at, at least for me anyway um i can i can say oh this is just for for pleasure and i don't i don't feel up to making this this thing but because it was 
quote unquote for other people. Um, it was like, no, I should, I should, I should show up. I should, I should do that thing um, and be accountable to it. And also because the whole thing is recorded. <laughs> That's cool. Um, mm, I, I love, I love Dredge to absolute distraction. Um, Co is one of my favorite OCs. Um, and I'm really grateful uh, that I got to play co core uh, and, and have the interactions that I did. Um, and my only regret was being uh, just an enormously oblivious white person for the f first half of this show and also the second half, to be honest. But, um, you know, you'll, you'll learn and you try to do better. So, um, yeah, this, this game was good and I'm uh, delighted and honored that I got to, to play it with y'all. Likewise. Takuma, any you, you any final thoughts on the campaign? I'm like really satisfied with how things ended, and I think there was there were some bits in the middle where it was rough for me, and I was like falling asleep, but there was some, God, it was rough, um, a little bit, um, but the past couple months have been like heading towards the end I like yeah it was really the escalation there was something um <laughs> yeah uh I mean I'm fucking playing beam saber again in like a week and a half I don't <laughs> yeah. really <laughs> I'm running it again. all I do is play this game <laughs> all I do is play this game apparently you're running it again <laughs> I mean, I am running again. Eat, sleep, for... beam, repeat. Eat, sleep, beam, repeat. <laughs> Three shot. Maybe I'll run it for. Uh, maybe I'll run it in August too. Who knows? Who fucking knows? <laughs> um, this is just who I am now. But uh, yeah, I, I, I am really happy to just let Pitchfork rest. Like she's done. That's it. That that was that story that we. I think we managed to tell in the season in the whole in the show and that's it and i'm i'm actually really satisfied with having a kind of a narrative like a complete narrative in this in this show so i'm very glad to have that and i'm glad that uh oh my god at the end where she's like finally starting to really act like a friend with dredge um I think that took a really long time, maybe too long, but it was really satisfying um, to have all of that kind of come together there. Um, I like endings. I like endings. I like the finale a lot. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm so glad we got to have that bad bitch off at the end. <laughs> it was so good. Yeah. Oof. All right. Uh, I guess it's my turn for final thoughts. Um, this was great, y'all. Thank you so much for being amazing players and making amazing characters and uh, enjoying the, the absurd bullshit I put in front of you. It was such good bullshit. Um, and th Very good bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for putting up with the changes to the rules that went on, um, and and trying. Traveling out. companion. <laughs> I don't think I, I used that until the last fucking mission. I'm all mixed up. I've been through so many versions. <laughs> and uh, God, if if you're listening to this, uh, or watching it on stream, or on YouTube. Thank you for following along with this. I'm guessing you probably won't have just jumped right to the post-mortem. Otherwise, I mean, if you have, you got all the spoilers, basically. 
<laughs> yeah, holy shit. Thank you so much for listening. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Sometimes you just got to see how pathos laden everybody is at the end before you can like... I'm one of those people when I buy a book, I read the last page first to see if it's worth my time. I accidentally, um, when I was listening to Friends at the Table, uh, listened to the Winter and Hyron postmortem episode first. Because <laughs> I didn't know where to start. Oh, uh, what? <laughs> like, at the top of the podcast feed. So I listened to like 20 minutes of it before realizing... Uh, oh shit, this is the first episode. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you're a disaster and I love you. Uh, I am disaster gay. Do I... I don't know if I have any other thoughts. Um, God, to take a page out of uh, Gundam F91, this is only the beginning. <laughs> Uh, uh, F91 was a movie that was supposed to be essentially the pilot for a whole TV show. There was no TV show. And the movie ends with the phrase, this is only the beginning. <laughs> um, That's good. Yes. Um, yeah, there will be more updates to Beam Saber. Version 0.42 is almost finished. Um, and once version 0.42 is done... I'm going to look through my notes, but I think that might basically be it. It might be time to send it off to Evil Hat for full evaluation. And if they turn me down, well, I guess I'm figuring out Kickstarter. Um, Because this sure as shit isn't just going on my itch forever. (laughs) Um, Although if you have purchased it, thank you so much for giving me money. And if you're a Patreon, thank you so much for giving me money. (laughs) <laughs> they, both of those have allowed me to commission uh, cover art at this point, and in the future I will be commissioning other material. Uh, it helped me commission the stream overlay from Hadrian and the Beam Saber um, Discord moderation guidelines from Takuma. So, you know, this the, the financial support really makes a difference. Um, yeah. Speaking of, if you'd like to pick up the rules for Beam Saber, you can do so at austin ramseyitchio slash Beam Saber. Uh, I also have a Patreon. Love the hustle. You can find it at patreon.com slash Austin Ramsey. Uh, if you don't like itch for whatever reason, you can also find Beam Saber on Drive Through RPG. You can also find all of my other game design work at austin-ramsey.itch.io or also drive through RPG. Um, yeah, uh, if you want to follow me, you can do so on Twitter at not an in. As always, this stream is presented by You Don't Meet in an Inn, an actual play podcast about exploring obscure tabletop role-playing games with a diverse rotating cast. Uh, if you've enjoyed these long streams, um, this long-term campaign, we also do a Friday stream of Fantasy Craft, which Sasha and Hadrian are a part of, and Cassandra was briefly a part of. Yeah, I'm lucky I'm at, like elsewhere right now because my internet still isn't working at my house. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, hmm. There. Oh, yes. You, If you want to find You Don't Meet an Inn, it's on wherever you get your podcasts. You can find it, I'm sure. Um, if my and, review on iTunes is really helpful. Yes, iTunes, iTunes reviews are always nice and helpful. Uh, itch and drive through RPG reviews for Beam Saber are nice and helpful. Um, and if you can't buy those and you want to support the, the game just you know share it on your social media uh all beam saber is also on facebook as well there's a facebook page for it if uh, you do the facebook um and i think that's it for my plugs for this campaign well done i have been joined by sasha hey i've been i've been sasha this whole time um 
you can find me on Twitter at Sasha underscore no. Um, you can follow all my game dev stuff at T Cabbage. You can get my games at um, at 22to22.itch.io. Um, you can check out the game that I make, uh, Spindle Wheel, at um, at tcabbage.com slash spindle wheel. You can check out Spindle Wheel Stories, which is the podcast that I make with Spindle Wheel. Uh, just look up Spindle Wheel Stories, that'll be it. Um, do I have anything else to plug? Um, if you liked the magpie, uh, go look at Felix Kramer's Strangers uh, at, at atrocityland.com um, and uh, Turbo Fanatics uh, comic af- affiliate, um, turbofanatics.dvnr.com. You were just on Game Closet too. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. If you if you want to hear me uh, stutter through some extremely tepid takes about uh, game design, go <laughs> listen to that, that episode of Game, of game Closet. <laughs> Um, you also do commissioned work, yes? Oh yeah, you want to pay me for your logos and and pay me to draw your OC. I would, uh, that would be delightful. <laughs> uh, you can check out my portfolio at sashareneau.com. Uh, S-A-S-H-A-R-E-N-E-A-U dot com. Um, that's, I, yeah. You also do layout work? I also do, I also do do layout work. I do a lot. I... I, yeah, so logos and 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 if you need somebody to, to lay out your book, fucking hit me up. Um, I I did the work for uh, for interstitial arts intertwine by Riley Hawkins. Um, and yeah, so remember, friends, friends don't let friends forget their plugs. <laughs> I think that's all of them. I think that's all of them. Oh, you want to listen to my music? Oh my God. <laughs> you do music? Please, <laughs> it's good. <laughs> it's really that's good. Right. Um, I think that's 22to22.soundcloud. No, it's soundcloud.com slash 22 to 22. Yeah. yeah. You can find all that on, on, on my Twitter, Sasha underscore. Now it's all, it's all on, on pinned. And Patreon. Uh, Patreon.com slash 22to22. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Jess, it is your turn. <laughs> can- okay. So. I'm going to keep this nice and clean because I've, I've been doing this on the podcast forever. You guys can follow me on Twitter, Twitch, and Patreon.com slash Quasinym. That's Q-U-A-S-I-N-Y-M. So if you want to keep me off the streets, hell yeah. Uh, you can also follow my podcast on Twitter at Movie Mark Cast. Find it on iTunes, wherever stuff is sold. We talk about movies. We dissect them. Half critical theory, half fun romp. Always a lot of fun. There we go. They're Boom! Good. They're good. I just finished listening to the John Wick 3 one today. Uh, and we fixed those audio issues. Thank you so much for that, Austin. Uh, you're welcome. Ray, your turn. Ah, uh, I have, like, nothing to plug. Um, but hi! I have been Ray for most of this, I think. Maybe. Um, <laughs> you can find me on Twitter at Ray Ray the Gay Gay, uh, and you can find my games at uh, rayinthefog.itch.io I may be taking um, uh, because I, I'm much to my chagrin very good at like 5th edi- edition D&D stuff um, so I may be taking homebrew commissions uh, in the foreseeable <laughs> future nice alright Takuma you're up Oh boy, um, I have been Takuma for who knows how much longer, I don't know, names are weird. Um, Woo! My Twitter is at Takuma underscore Okada underscore, that's sort of where I am, mainly. Uh, I have a Patreon at patreon.com slash no road home, uh, I have music at soundcloud.com slash ro- no road home, and I have games, and a little bit of my music. Uh, at noroadhome.itch.io including uh, a two song work in progress uh, soundtrack EP thing for for mech stuff including uh, the title track Fight the War Not the Soldiers uh, which was like basically fan music of this campaign in house folks we do it in house (laughs) is it fanfic if if the creators make it I don't fucking know I don't fucking know. Ask George Lucas. <laughs> don't ask George Lucas. No. Yeah, good George point. Lucas. Yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. 
I am also going to be on another show. Uh, actually, two shows that should be out. One is called Continuity Anchor, which is a weekly uh, multi-dimensional sketch radio comedy show um, that I'm doing with uh, Ammer and Andy Burdan uh, and Evan, which is at at Continuity Radio. I am also going to be on the show Whispers in the Shade, which I'm doing with uh, Bren and AJ and Kai. Uh, and you can find that on Twitter at WITS underscore show. Um, Sounds that, dope as shit. Yeah, that first season is also about mechs and, uh, well, the game is about other selves, which could include uh, personas or stands or mechs. But in this case, it's mechs. Um, so there will be more of that, including a song that I am extremely proud of as the theme. Um, so definitely look forward to that. And one last thing. I have a game that I have been writing for over a year now called Stewpot Tales from a Fantasy Tavern, which is a collection of mini games uh, about adventurers who have retired their whole party retires and you know they set up shop uh, and try to run a tavern together and reintegrate into society um sort of like firebrands where it's a bunch of mini games you know and sasha in fact is going to be doing art for that uh hell yeah i am still not fucking rules but fucking rules it looks uh, great and we will be crowdfunding that on itch actually because there is something i wanted to try <laughs> um and that will be probably end of june or early july i have i've got some paycheck issues with my current job so we'll see we'll see what happens because i need some good art before i can actually launch the page you know go buy stew pot it's a really good game please please give me your money <laughs> Right. The cry of the internet creator. <laughs> okay, Cass, your turn. Hi, I have been someone else. I am currently Cassandra. Um, I contribute nothing of value to society. <laughs> or shit. You can, find, you can find me on Twitter <laughs> at a Cass Darkly. Um, but no, yeah. Um, yeah, you can find me there. I do, well, when my internet's working, I do some uh, role-playing streams with people as I can find them. And, yeah, come chat with me. Nice. All right. Thank you, everyone here and everyone listening and everyone watching. Thank you so much for joining us on this Mortuary Affairs adventure. This has been Beam Saber the Cenotaph. And before we go, I just want to remind everyone to fight the war and not the soldiers. Signing off.